Professor Dave and Chegg here. We have been talking quite a bit about hybridization, but we have been focusing largely on the hybridization of carbon atoms in organic molecules. We should be able to assign the hybridization of any atom in a molecule, so let's make sure we can apply this to other elements that we will frequently encounter. Take for example methylamine. This is just ammonia with a methyl group. We already know that the carbon atom is sp3 hybridized, as it has four bonds to four other atoms. We can also look at the nitrogen atom and see that it is sp3 hybridized as well, since it also has four electron domains. It makes three bonds to hydrogen, or carbon atoms, and then it has a lone pair, which is the fourth electron domain. The lone pair offers slightly more repulsion than a bonding electron pair, so this HNH bond angle will be slightly contracted from the typical 109.5 degrees. In turn, the HNC bond angle will be slightly larger. Nitrogen will most frequently be sp3 hybridized, though it can be sp2 hybridized if it participates in a double bond, or sp hybridized if it participates in a triple bond. Let's now look at methanol. The carbon is again sp3, and we can say the same about the oxygen, as it has two bonds to other atoms, and then two lone pairs, for a total of four electron domains. Again, the lone pairs will cause a slight contraction of this HOC bond angle to about 108.5 degrees. Analogous to nitrogen is phosphorus, and since this is in the N equals 3 shell, it has access to d orbitals, which means it can expand its octet. Phosphorus will most frequently have five bonds, like here with methyl phosphate. Here, phosphorus has four electron domains between three single bonds and one double bond, so it will be sp3 hybridized, with bond angles very close to 109.5 degrees. Finally, analogous to oxygen is sulfur. We can look at something like dimethyl sulfide, where the sulfur will also be sp3 hybridized, with two bonds to carbon atoms and two lone pairs. Here we begin to see a deviation from the bond angles predicted by Vesper theory, as this CSC bond is about 99.1 degrees. As we move down the periodic table, the bond angles predicted by Vesper theory become less and less reliable, so that is something to keep in mind. So we should now be able to look at heteroatoms in organic molecules and assign their hybridization, even if lone pairs are not depicted. Since nitrogen, oxygen, and phosphorus are so common in organic molecules, this will come up over and over again. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.